On this episode, we finally do something with the Tormach. So the part I'm making is considered a mystery part. Pause. First off, I just want to mention that the lighting in this video is absolutely terrible and I'm still working on that, so bear with me. And you'll find out sooner rather than later what it actually is. I, you might have some clues as to what it is, but I'm not going to say anything. So let's get into it. Believe it or not, this same day that I was cutting raw stock with a sawzall, I bought a horizontal bandsaw from Grizzly, so no more of that crap. And because I cut the raw stock with a sawzall, you can imagine that it was not straight at all, so I just sort of put the superfly in there to face everything off, and I just manly, manually went back and forth to sort of flatten everything out because, wow, was it, it was crooked as a politician. Going in about 15 thousandths increments down in the Z, just to sort of flatten everything out. Didn't work out too bad. And here is where the lighting gets absolutely terrible. And I apologize. Uh, I was trying to show how I was setting the offsets for, for the tools. So, not the best, but it'll work for now. And I have to make two of these same parts, so I have the Heimer in there, and I put the the work piece way at the end of the at the end of the vise, so I could sort of get somewhat repeatable with with uh, both pieces that I'm making. And here's where I realized that my zero points were way off. With the Heimer, I decided that I was going to put them where I thought they were relative to where they should be. So yeah, it was all a big mess. I had to put the hammer back in there and check everything out. Then I decked everything off with the Superfly, and then I started with the contour on the outside. And that was with a quarter inch end mill. We'll get into this when I start machining the second part, my actual technical specifications that I used with each uh, mill. So here is the eighth inch end mill, and it's just doing its adaptive thing. And here we're finishing up with the outside chamfer and the edge break on all the all the holes. So since I know the box that I just made, or this little contour in the bottom, is 1.5 inches by 1.5 inches, right here on the bottom, I'm going to measure from this side of the jaw, since I made this pair of these two are collinear, this face right here of the jaw, and this face of the part I just machined on the other side. So half of 1.5, my center is right in the middle, so half of 1.5, and that's my X, that's, that's how I found my x is zero point and everything else should stay the same. I should probably redo z. I'll do re redo z just to make sure. As a matter of fact, I want to redo all of them just to make sure because the y should be off this back face too and up 0.75. I'll just redo everything. So after I re-zeroed everything out and I decked everything off with the superfly again, and this is my first time doing this, so I was overriding the, the feed rates, so I wasn't really sure how to go about the feeds and speeds yet. I had an idea, but still, I was still slightly scared. And here is the outside contour, 
and this is where it sort of didn't line up with each other and I can that was pretty much a, a rookie mistake and I didn't have any uh, sacrificial stock to hold on to on the bottoms I was just holding on to the part that was still meant to be machined if that makes any sense And here is the final first part. You can see a little bit of a lip there where uh, the tools didn't line up exactly. So that's what I meant by the rookie mistake there. Now before we get into this second piece, let's let's look at some CAD and CAM. So here is the 3D model of this part. I have this little cutout right here in the middle and four little holes for uh, neodymium magnets. So that's all it is really, nothing too special. And I put 2D chamfers around the outside on the top and the bottom and then I have some engraving on the bottom here so now let's take a look into the cam and for the setup I have a 1.6 by 1.5 by 0.628 and obviously as you've seen the 1.6 is not even close because I cut the raw stock with a sawzall we just had to deal with adversity there but anyway I uh, the raw stock is 1.6 by 1.5 by 1 by 0.628 and that should be 0.625 but I measured it with some calipers and it was a little bit oversized so I just went with that so no big deal there and I put my origin right in the middle turn this back on you can see where the part is relative to the stock and I did a couple passes facing passes to get to the right height I think I did in 20,000 or 15,000 20 thousandths maximum depth for each pass then came around and contoured see I didn't have any stock to hold on to at the bottom so I had to flip it in machine stock that I'm keeping basically so it was a little bit more difficult here and you'll see there's a little step on the sides here uh, after I get the part done and here is the adaptive cutting out all the insides here it is 60 thousandths optimal load the width of cut and I'm going this is a eighth inch end mill 5,000 RPM at 25 inches a minute. I don't know if this is very good. The feed per tooth is almost nothing, so that's probably bad, I would assume. And I want to go, I think, at least 3,000 uh, feed per tooth. So let's. Uh, I'll have to optimize that a little bit next time. This is my first real part, so I'm just trying to sort of trying things out, seeing how it works. And here is the contour after I adaptive, and I got some insight from other YouTube watchers that I should definitely do a contour. I knew that the adaptive isn't a, a finishing pass but I didn't really contour anything or uh, do a finishing pass on my last uh, my first part that I made and the 2D chamfer on this side and a chamfer just a little edge break on the insides of everything else. Then after that I'll flip the part over and keep my origin right in the middle face everything down contour what's left of the stock engrave and then chamfer on the bottom that's about it nothing insanely special start a project and here I am just starting the second part getting everything all zeroed out to where it should be correctly this time and as you can see it should be 1.5 that whole length the length of the stock and it was fairly close so here's the superfly decking everything off I I don't know if that's okay I mean it's, it's smoking pretty good <laughs> so I don't know if that's the fog buster that's causing all that smoke but maybe somebody can help me out on the feeds and speeds with that And here's another rookie mistake here. I'm cutting air for a while with the eighth inch end mill and I just failed to precisely look at the, the cam program before I processed it.
here I am just zeroing off that face of the jaw just like I did in the first part and of course it did the same thing I still have a little bit of a step and the superfly is also smoking again <laughs> And here's the finished piece. I may or may not put this in the good old Harbor Freight tumbler just to make it look that much better, but I'm not sure yet. By the way, that loud noise there, that buzzy noise, is my obnoxiously loud air compressor. But it's the only one I have for now. <laughs> 